Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I wanted to get today's video out before summer ended because I wanna show you how you can create some prints with the sun and turmeric. It's super easy and I'll show you how to do it. First, you're gonna need some supplies. You're obviously going to need some turmeric. This is just a very cheap bottle of it from the grocery store, it's in the spice section. And then some isopropyl alcohol, I'm using 91% doesn't have to be this full strength of it. You can use the 71 or whatever percentage that is. Works just as well. But these are your two main ingredients to get this project to work. For the rest of the supplies, you are going to need some sort of jar to store this concoction in. And you're also going to need a filter. Now, I like to filter my solution out. I don't like the grittiness of the turmeric to end up in the actual solution. You don't have to do it. Um, if you want the grittiness, by all means, just mix the two together, but I like to filter mine out. So I use a coffee filter. Also, not totally necessary, but this stuff stains, so I like to wear a pair of rubber gloves when I'm doing this. But if you're cool with yellow hands for a few days, by all means, go that route. You also need some sort of brush. I am using a very cheap chip brush. This is from the local hardware store. These are about 50 to 75 cents a piece. Very, very, very cheap. Don't use an expensive brush for this. This will stain the bristles. Now you also need some sort of paper to print onto. There are a lot of different options. Your one requirement is that it needs to be able to hold up to being dunked in water and left there for about 20 to 30 seconds, maybe a little longer if you walk away, but just some sort of paper that will stand up to water. You also need some sort of solid object to print with. I'm using dried leaves and flowers. If you do not have those, you can use die cuts, you can use rocks, you can use any sort of solid object, just something that will not allow the sun to get through. Now you also need some pieces of glass. This is going to hold everything in place while your pieces are outside in the sun in case a strong burst of wind or even a little breeze comes, it holds everything in place. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our turmeric and alcohol mixture. So I am using an old bouillon container, these little glass jars, they work great for things like this. I keep a lot of things in them and I'm just going to stick my coffee filter in this and just kind of fold it over the edges. This is going to be my little filter so I don't end up with turmeric powder in the mixture. Now again, if you don't mind that grittiness, you don't have to do this. Just maybe let your turmeric and alcohol steep for about five to 10 minutes or so, kind of co-mingle in the jar before you apply it to your paper. But just know if you don't filter it like I'm doing here, you're going to wind up with powder on your cardstock and this might not work as well or look as nice. So keep that in mind. So there is no real rhyme or reason for me. Um, I just put about a tablespoon of turmeric powder in to the filter. And you can see on my work surface, I put a sheet of paper down. Turmeric powder is very fine. It gets everywhere and it stains something terrible. So wear old clothes, put a nice piece of paper down or just a cheap piece of paper down underneath as you're working too to catch any little stray powders. And like I said, wear gloves if you don't want your fingers stained. Now once I get that powder into the filter, I'm gonna just break up a few of the clumps. Mine was a little clumpy. And then I am going to start adding my alcohol. Now I would say I probably add about a quarter cup to this. Again, not really a recipe. I'm sure you can find one online. Um, you just don't wanna overdo it with the amount of turmeric you have. So keep that in mind. Now you will see as I poured this in, mine is going through very fast. That is not normal. So I was a little suspicious here. I was like, okay, what's going on? Cause this is not supposed to filter this fast. I actually had a hole in my filter. So I, if that ends up happening to you, don't worry about it. Just take this filter out and 
not necessarily start over, but start over with a new filter. So I'll add a little more alcohol just because I didn't catch on right away. And then as it goes through pretty quickly here again, and I can see some granules in the bottom of my little jar here, I'll just refilter it into another glass jar. So I'm not going to waste the liquid that went through, but you can see quite a bit of that powder did get into the bottom of the jar there. That's going to end up on my paper and I don't want that. So I went ahead and just refiltered into another jar and you can see how slow it's going through now. So it's working and you can see it's already starting to stain that coffee filter itself yellow. So like I said, I did about a tablespoon of turmeric powder to about a quarter cup of alcohol. And you might think that that is not a lot of solution, but this solution goes a long way. So I'll let that continue to just kind of filter through and collect in the bottom of my jar until there is no liquid left. Now it might be better just to walk away for a little bit, but you can see I have this gorgeous yellow liquid now ready to go. Once that liquid is ready to go, I am going to immediately start applying this to some cardstock. I am using just a regular heavyweight cardstock. You can use watercolor paper, and I'll show you a few more options too that I wanted to experiment with later on in this video. But you can pretty much use any sort of paper that will stand up to being dunked in water. That's all the requirement is. So I am brushing one layer of this on. You don't need to be super careful. This is kind of like your alcohol markers. It might look a little streaky at first, but once it settles into the paper, it will become a nice flat surface. It's also going to seep through to the back and you don't want any more than one layer of this on. I experimented with it. I tried a few more layers on some of my other pieces and I'll show you what those ended up looking like. One layer does the trick though, and it really creates a beautiful, beautiful end result. I'm also leaving a little space around the edges. I am turning mine into card fronts, and then some of them I will be turning into just journaling pieces. So depending on what you want these for is how you're going to apply your alcohol mixture onto your paper. I wanted a little bit of a border, so I'm leaving a little bit of a border. You can do this in circles. You can do this in little miniature triangles. You can do it in little miniature squares. You can do it in brush strokes. It really is up to you how you wanna put this on your paper for the end result. No right or wrong way. As I'm putting this on, you can see that I have turned off my overhead lights at this point. That is because at this time, once that mixture is created, once the turmeric and the alcohol mix, it immediately starts reacting to the light. So in order to avoid as much of that reaction happening right now as possible, first of all, I turn off my overhead light and I work in a little bit of darkness. I also have a black light off to the left of me. If you don't have that and you need to work in the light because of eye issues, some ways to get around it reacting so much are once you get this on the paper, you can put it into a cabinet or somewhere where there isn't any light directly on it to start drying. That will help slow down that process. You can also work quickly and efficiently and just have things ready to go. Now I did so many pieces of paper with that little bit of mixture that I created and I still have some left over. So I decided I'm gonna do some experimenting. Like I said, a little bit of this mixture really goes a long way. So you're gonna think, oh my goodness, I don't have enough when you really do. And I didn't think I did, but I had more than enough with some left over to play around with. So what I decided to do was grab some old book page. Now again, the book page that I am applying this to needs to be able to stand up to being dunked in water. So just keep that in mind as you kind of pull pieces to do this technique on. Just remember, it's gotta be put in water. So if you've got a really old, brittle book page or piece of music sheet, that can't work. You need it to be able to get soaked, completely soaked in that water and still hold up. So I'm again applying this just like I did the others. 
Then I am going to apply this to some fabric. So I wanted to do it on a darker piece of fabric to see if this would work. So I am just soaking this. Now this does take a little bit more of the liquid. You really wanna soak those fibers in. And then I'm also applying this to a piece of white fabric. This is a flower sack dishcloth. I think I got these in a pack of four for five bucks from Target. I'll leave some links over on Amazon to some things that are very similar. I like to cut these up and dye them and I use them for like SVG type of files to do those things on. So again, you just want to make sure that you put enough of this liquid on to completely soak the fibers for this technique to work. So I'm putting that on and then these are all ready to go. So you're gonna see a lighting change. I went ahead and turned off the light since I am pulling these all back out from the cabinet. Now I let these completely dry again in the dark. You'll know when they're dry, when it doesn't look, it turns a little bit lighter, just like alcohol markers do. It has that wet look to it. You wanna make sure both sides of these are dry. And then I am putting them onto a piece of cardboard. This is just some old packaging. You just want a nice flat surface that's sturdy enough. And before I even started this project, what I did was I cut my pieces of paper. So I cut the pieces of paper I'm using and then I went ahead and arranged my designs how I wanted them and I snapped a picture. This allows me to very quickly figure things out and put things right back in their place. So I can play around all I want in the beginning when I don't have this liquid on there reacting to the light. Because as soon as I get this back out and it's got that liquid on it, it's going to start developing. So I like to plan out ahead as much as I can. So I cut my pieces of paper, get all my flowers and my dried leaves and all that out. And then I lay it all out and I snap a picture. Then I can refer to that picture as I go and I create these images. I like to use a variety of dried leaves and flowers. I also like to use some die cuts for things like this. But I'll just continue to reference that photo and place down my leaves and things. I am doing this all indoors because I don't want anything to shift around as I am placing these down. I've got some dried leaves, I've got some dried hydrangea, I have some just dried weeds from my yard. I do have a video that is all about drying flowers, two different ways I like to do it. I will leave that linked in the top right hand corner. The one thing that you do wanna make sure of is that you are not adding any sort of liquid to this. So I did have some pieces that I did the first time that had a little bit of leftover moisture in the flowers. Those did leave some marks on the paper. So just keep that in mind that as you put this in the sun, it will release some of that moisture if you're using those newer flowers and it might leave some marks on your paper. So I went ahead and set that all up. And then I also set up my second board and this has some of my test strips on there, which I did not plan out. And I didn't wanna grab out all of my different dried flowers and dig through them because I knew this was already developing and I wanted to get it out in the sun as soon as possible. So what I did was I just grabbed some of my wildflower die cuts. These are great for this project and I kind of forgot I had them, but as I was digging through, I was like, these would be perfect. I will leave a link down below in the description box to the post on my blog where you can find these SVG cut files. There are three separate eight and a half by 11 um, SVG pages that are full of these wildflower die cuts. And they're kind of perfect for this project. And I've used them on a lot of different projects here lately once I rediscovered them. So I'll leave that link down in the description box below. But I am just going to place these over my little test pieces here. Wasn't quite sure if this would work, but it did. I didn't know if the alcohol would kind of soak in there. These worked great. Again, you just wanna make sure that you're using objects that the sun cannot penetrate through. So if you wanna use coins for little dots on your background, you can absolutely do that. If you wanted to use pieces of string, you can do that. 
there are a number of different household items and just kind of junk things that you can use. Just make sure the sun can't get through them. So once I had everything figured out, it is time to lay those glass pieces over the top. What I am using for my glass pieces are inserts from picture frames. And here's the thing, I only had two eight and a half by 11s that were easily accessible. I didn't want to take anything off the walls or move any more things around. So I grabbed those two out and I used those, but I still had a whole nother piece of cardboard, large cardboard, that needed something to hold it down. So what I actually ended up doing on that piece is using clear acetate and just painter's tape around the edge to hold it down in place, and it worked fabulous. So if you don't have glass on hand, but you have some acetate, by all means, use that. Now you wanna take those cardboard pieces and place them outdoors in direct sunlight. You want it directly shining down on top of this for like three hours, you can go longer if you want. Now at about the 10 minute left mark, I like to go ahead and create my next solution. And this is going to stop the reaction that is happening with the sun and kind of finalize your results. So wherever, when you keep going out and checking on it, wherever you're happy with the way it's looking, grab it up, bring it inside and dunk it. What this is, is just baking soda. You can also use borax, I use baking soda and water. Then grab your pieces once your time is up and bring them inside and you can see immediately the reaction that's happened. It is so, so cool. But here you can see that acetate with painter's tape around the edge. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but it worked beautifully, which is great because then you don't have to take your pictures apart. <laughs> but here are those results. Now this is a very bright yellow color. Mine does not stay yellow. Mine turns a very golden brown. It's beautiful and it gives sort of a vintage look. I wonder if you would leave these as is, if it would stay that yellow color. You could try it, I have not, um, but I think it's beautiful. But I like to dunk mine to stop that reaction. So what I do is I just have my mixture ready to go, pop in my pieces, let it soak for a few seconds, pull it out, rinse it off and let it dry. It really is that simple. Just dunk it, get that into the fibers of the paper, stop that chemical reaction and then let it dry. But you can see the back that did not get any sun, did not change at all. You just have those pieces where the flowers were that the sun couldn't penetrate through. And then on some of those leaves, especially those polka dot plant leaves, you can see where it has the polka dots just because the sun can seep through those a little bit more. Very, very cool and it just gives all those different textures. I'm just gonna continue to dunk these right down into the water. Like I said, make sure your paper can stand this dunk and you're good to go. So once these are rinsed and drying, you will start them to see or start to see them change colors. Here is the final result. I've got this beautiful slimline card front ready to go. I absolutely adore the way this one turned out. And then I've got some A2 size card bases that are ready to go with all of these different leaves. I've got a hydrangea leaf here, which is just gorgeous. It ended up more yellow and you can see the back there with a little tinge of that golden around the edges. I have some like evergreen shrub from behind my house. These turned out beautiful and almost replicates coral. And then I have a peony with, um, I think these are actually lilac leaves, but I just kind of pieced them together. And then a hydrangea with some leaves in there as well. Absolutely stunning. These are ready to go and make cards very quickly. Now I have some different pieces that I will be using for either cards, tags, or journaling. I just have some different shrubs, some different kind of weeds that I found and dried. These turned out beautiful. And then I also have some more leaves here. Leaves are always, always great and easy. You can see on this one where that edge of the glass was, and it did leave a little line, that's okay. Then I have some polka dot plant, like the tops of them, a eucalyptus leaf that came in a set of dried flowers that I bought online. I will leave that linked uh, over on my Amazon storefront. 
This is again just another kind of weed that I found in my yard that ended up beautiful, dried. I've got some more leaves here. And then one of my favorites, I absolutely love clover. I think this looks so neat and it turned out beautiful. Now let's look at the little test strips. The book page turned out beautiful. I can't wait to use this in some journaling. You could also cut this out and use this on a card front. And again, this was not flowers. These were die cuts from that wildflower die cut set. So keep that in mind as you're doing this technique. Does not have to be real flowers. Does not have to be like an an object that you have in your house, you can use those die cuts and create some beautiful pieces. The dark fabric did not turn out. I didn't expect it to, but I wanted to give it a shot. But this white fabric turned out beautiful. Again, these were made with die cuts. This would make some beautiful journaling pieces. Love, love, love the way this one turned out. So if you do do this technique on fabric, just make sure that it's either white or light enough. You can see it kind of did show up on that darker, but once I stopped the process, you just, you couldn't see it anymore. So it was kind of a fail. That's okay. Use a white or a lighter fabric and it will turn out beautifully. The options are kind of endless for that. I think that is beautiful um, and a great way to make some patterns on your fabrics naturally. Now, here are some other ones that I did way before this. These are ones where I put on, I think, three coats, and then that evergreen on the bottom, I only put one coat. These are on plain cardstock, and I only left them in the sun for about 30 to 45 minutes. And it was late in the evening, it wasn't a super bright sun. So try different times of day, try different levels of um, the, the, uh, mixture on your paper. It gives a much darker effect this way. And then again, this one, this was only one coat. I think this would make like a gorgeous vintage slide for journaling, really gorgeous, different outcomes for different processes. So keep that in mind as you're doing this technique, yours might not turn out exactly like mine. Um, so you have a few options, leave them out in the sun longer, leave them out in the sun shorter, apply more coats like I did on the right, or apply one coat like I did on the left of that solution. And you're going to get different results. But again, such a neat and fun technique. This is a really, really fun technique to do and great for the end of summer when that sun is super strong. So I wanted to make sure to get this out just in time for you to kind of fill up those last few days of summer and try out this fun sun printing technique with turmeric. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Here are our last few looks at some of those pieces that I absolutely adore. Until next time, everyone, happy crafting.